Hello World History 1 students, this is Mr. Everton, and this is a video all about the Mauryan Empire and its most important emperor, Ashoka. Ashoka was uh, an Indian emperor who um, adopted Buddhism as his official state religion. So um, at the end of this video, please be able to answer this question, how did the Mauryan Empire unify India? We're going to talk about politics for a minute. Um, we talked about how the Indus Valley civilization uh, disappeared and how Indo-Aryans migrated into India. When they did that, they established many different kingdoms throughout India. There were many different independent kingdoms with independent kings who were operating by themselves. So India was very separate. Um, it was very diverse with many different groups of people living on the Indian subcontinent. In 512 BCE, a Persian emperor named Darius the Great, yes, his name is pronounced Darius, and that might sound pretentious, but that's how you're supposed to say it. Darius uh, conquered part of India and brought it into contact with the Middle East, and we'll talk more about that in a future video. We'll also talk about in how in the future that the Greeks conquered um, parts of India in 326 BCE. And so these were outside emperors, outside conquerors, Alexander the Great, the Greek, uh, who tried to conquer parts of India, Darius, who conquered parts of India. These are outside conquerors who are coming into India and taking over parts of it. But India was still not unified as one thing. There had been no control of the entire subcontinent or even most of the subcontinent until the Mauryan dynasty in 322 BCE. This guy, Chandragupta Maurya, it's a mouthful, Chandragupta, it's a pretty good name. Um, he unified most of the Indian subcontinent under his family, the Mauryan fam the Maurya family. His grandson, Ashoka, is the focus of this video. So his, Chandragupta had unified most of India, um, and Ashoka comes to the throne. Uh, it's a hereditary dynasty. He becomes the emperor. And his first thing that he has to do is to try to expand his territory into this um, place called Kalinga. Um, Kalinga is located, let me see if I can do this. Probably going to mess this up. Kalinga is like right around there. Oh, now I have to erase it. There you go. Kalinga is right around there. Um, and it was like this holdout that didn't want to join the Maori Empire. And so Ashoka went down there and fought this battle where apparently like 10,000 people died. And this is where the story gets weird because all of that that I just described, that's very ordinary. It's very like everybody was doing that. Alexander the Great was doing that. Um, Darius the Great was doing that. What was weird about Ashoka and not weird, but like in a good way, he was horrified by his own massacres. Like he killed 10,000 people and then he stepped back from that and he said, oh my God, I just killed all these people. That's terrible. Why am I doing that? Just so that I can conquer a little bit of territory. That's not the way I should be living my life. And he converted to Buddhism. He became a Buddhist, the first Buddhist emperor of India. And he began ruling through Buddhism. He began to use the religion of Siddhartha Gautama in order to try to unify India. So here is how he did that. He put up edicts, which are like laws or rules or proclamations, and he carved them on these pillars that like the one you see pictured here, and he put them strategically in different parts of the kingdom so that people would be able to read them. Um, on his pillars, these edicts, he describes how he sent missionaries to China to spread Buddhism. Um, that's one of the major influences that Ashoka had, was that he spread Buddhism outside of India for the first time. Here you can see uh, a map showing the spread of Buddhism gradually between its um, birth in the 500s BCE to the 600s, B the 600s CE. And eventually, B Buddhism would begin in northern India before spreading down to the rest of India, then it would spread to Afghanistan, it would spread to China, to Korea, eventually to Japan, and also to Southeast Asia. And this is, today, this is where Buddhism is now mostly practiced in the world, in those places. Um, Ashoka also established public works in order to help unify India. He built free hospitals, he built veterinary clinics for people's animals, and he built roads, a network of roads to help unify the kingdom, and he put, like, the ancient version of, like, rest stops along the roads so that people could stop and feed their animals and sit in the shade and take a break from their traveling. 
Um, all of those things are in keeping with Buddhist ideas about how we should treat each other and how the world should work. These are all examples of valuing life and valuing the lives of other people and trying to make other people's lives easier. It's also an attempt to try to unify India under this philosophy, this religion of Buddhism. So to summarize, the Mauryan dynasty was the first empire to unify most of the Indian subcontinent. Its most famous emperor is Ashoka Maurya, who um, converted to Buddhism after a um, particularly bloody battle called Kalinka. Um, and when he did that, he helped to spread Buddhism to new places. And he also used Buddhism um, to create a series of public works to try to make India a better place and try to um, help to unify the country. Thanks very much for watching, and I will talk to you next time.